Potions play a big part in Hogwarts Legacy, so I've put together a quick guide on everything you need to know, including great farming spots for all potion ingredients. Potions can first be made pretty early on, right after your first potions class with Professor Sharp. You'll then have access to a potion station in his classroom, though you can really kick things up once you gain access to a room of requirement where you can build multiple stations. To craft potions, you'll first need their recipes. You will gain access to the Wigan World Potion Recipe and the Adurus Potion Recipe from your first class with Professor Sharp, but the rest you'll have to buy from Jay Pippins, the potion shop in Hogsmeade. These recipes are not the cheapest, you'll need 3,700 galleons to buy all four, though the cheapest recipe, which is for the Maxima Potion at only 500 galleons, is the most plainly useful as it simply buffs your damage for 30 seconds. To craft your potions you'll need the recipes, ingredients and a place to craft them. As mentioned before you can use the station in the potions classroom, but as you continue you'll gain access to a room of requirement, where you can conjure up your own potion making stations. By default you'll be able to conjure a station with one burner capable of making a single potion at a time, though through purchasing spellcrafts from Tomes and Scrolls, a shop in Hogsmeade, you can conjure two others with two and three burners. You are limited to building up to seven potion stations at once in the room of requirement, which is a fair bit to start off with, making the bigger stations a low priority off the bat. The medium potion station has two burners, the spellcraft to conjure this will set you back 1000 galleons, and the T-shaped potion station has three burners, with the spellcraft costing 2000 galleons. The Wigan World potion is likely the most important, being the basic and only healing potion. There will no doubt be a few occasions where you have to sink multiple of these in a short space of time, though you can mitigate that with a talent point or two to increase the potion's effectiveness. Under the core talents there are two levels of Wigan World potency, one available at level 5 and the other at level 16. It's not specific in how much this increases the effectiveness, but if the example video is to be believed, and my experience it doubles then triples the health regained from them. The Adurus potion will increase your defence dramatically for a short time. This can be increased to invulnerability and deflection of enemy attacks for its duration via the level 5 talent Adurus potency. The Maxima Potion will increase your spell damage for a short time. This is the most basically useful battle potion, just giving you a boost to damage, and it's one of the easier potions to make a lot of due to gathering the heart of the two ingredients in bulk during the game's main story quests. The level 16 plus talent to Maxima Potion potency in the Room of Requirement talents can be taken to increase the damage further through its use and even break enemy shields without the need to use a specific spell. Invisibility potions aren't made for sneaking as much as for battle. Using one will cause your enemies to lose sight of you for the duration, allowing you to run away or take a quick breather. The level 5 talent invisibility potion potency in Room of Requirement talents makes the effect duration longer. The focus potion is a really cool idea, it essentially decreases the cooldown on your spells for a short time. The level 22 talent focus potion potency in the Room of Requirement talents adds an effect where using any spell will increase the duration of the potion's effects. Sadly we don't get any actual numbers for all this, knowing how much longer it increases duration would be fantastic for theorising perfect rotations and the like. Thunderbrew is a really cool addition, it essentially makes a small storm over you which will strike nearby enemies with lightning, damaging and potentially stunning them. This makes it just a passive add-on of sorts as you whack the potion on and nothing in your rotation changes, you just have a bit of wildcard damage and help going on. As you can expect as a talent for it, Thunderbrew Potion Potency requiring level 22 or higher can be found in the Room of Requirement talents, and will increase the area this potion's effect affects and greatly increase the damage it deals. While this potion is expensive for the recipe and takes the longest to craft, the ingredients aren't too bad, pretty easily farmable, so if you want to put the effort in this could be a solid constant use potion in harder fights. There is a bonus potion called Felix Felicis, but this is only possible to craft if you pre-ordered Hogwarts Legacy on PlayStation. It reveals large equipment chests on your map for one in-game day, though I heard elsewhere it was one hour. A cool idea, but not the end of the world to not have. A special item that I really need to mention here are the Hopping Pots. This is a spellcraft available to purchase from Tomes and Scrolls in Hogsmeade, which allows you to build up to three Hopping Pots in the Room of Requirement. This spellcraft will cost you 3,000 galleons, but it's worth it. They are also expensive to build at 30 moonstone each, but once built, they will give you a free random potion every 12 minutes. This will build up fast and potentially supply all the potions you need if you only use them in the big all-out fights. 
Dittany leaves, knotgrass sprig, flux weed stem and shrivel fig fruit can all be found in pots in the room of requirement, making them incredibly easy to get in large quantities. Ashwinder eggs, hawk lump, leeches, moonstone and more can also be gained in small quantities from the beast areas of the room of requirement. You can also buy a ton of the wilder ingredients from J. Pippin's Potion Shop as well as a number of other vendors around the map. Though considering how many other things you'll need to buy, I'd suggest farming your ingredients manually. The first farming spot is one of the best and will give you ingredients for Wigan World Invisibility and Focus Potions. To fully use it, you'll need to have gained the Depulso spell, though Incendio will get you half of it, and neither are still a few. This is Hawklump Hollow, a cave on a cliffside just north of Hogsmeade. Outside you'll find two Hawklumps and a lacewing fly bush. Inside, provided you have Incendio or Confringo, you'll be able to loot a further four Hawklump. With the Pulso you'll find another hawk lump after which you can fight a troll one on one in an arena with a fair few throwable objects to help take it down, which will get you four troll bogeys. And finally after that you can grab a final hawk lump outside of the exit. You can run this spot as many times as you want by simply waiting by the entrance hawk lump spawns for six to seven half cycles until you load in with them back and ready to harvest. A better, very early and easy place to get lacewing flies for your focus potions is this little stop off Natty shows you if you go to Hogsmeade with her in the beginning. There are multiple plants here. There's another spot with four bushes full of lacewing flies on the path just by the water wheel on the northern outskirts of Hogsmeade. Leaping toadstool caps also litter the path from Hogswort to Hogsmeade, and out of all ingredients this is likely the one you won't really have to farm through obtaining them constantly while questing. For Ashwinder eggs, so you can make Aduras potions, head to this spot just west of the Quidditch pitch. There are six nests in this area, as before, the three day wait rule applies for respawns. Just make your way from here and go down south along the cliff sides. They are also easier to spot at night. For mongrel fur, the other ingredient in Aduras, your best bet is this location a fair bit south of Hogwarts, the mongrel lair. This spot will get you 8 mongrel fur per cycle as well as 14 moonstone which makes it pretty amazing spot. For respawns you shouldn't wait there, while waiting there will respawn the moonstone in 3 days, the mongrels won't spawn if you are close, but waiting then unloading the area by going to the flu west of here will bring them back. For leech juice to help make those maxima potions, head to the lower Hogsfield flu just south of Hogwarts and go straight ahead to the few wizards flying kites. There are two leeches right by them and a further seven just north of them on the bank. This area has a bonus of three hawk lumps, five moonstone and a cool little secret. Spider fangs will come to you regularly on the quest line, but for a great farming spot head to the spider's lair. It is located at the very northwest of the Hogwarts Valley region, north northwest of the West Hogwarts Valley flu. You'll find a bunch of spiders here as well as some hawk lump and something special. For Dugbug Tongue to make focus potions, you're going to have to work for it. There's a good spot just a little down the path to the left from the West Hogwarts Valley flu, but there are about four to five of them and they are very tanky. They also don't guarantee a tongue drop. On the plus side there are also a bunch of leaping toadstools everywhere and leeches here for efficiency. Lastly, for stench of the dead to make thunderbrew potions, I'd recommend this graveyard over the bridge and slightly north of the Keenbridge flu. A fair few will spawn in two waves here and provided you use fire magic, they'll be relatively easy to dispatch. I hope you found this guide helpful. More coming as well as a lot of shorts for bite-sized tips and tricks.